Well, hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Now, our next guest stars as Violet, a.k.a. one-third of the Baudelaire Orphans in Netflix's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Now, in its third and final season, the young siblings might finally discover the truth about their parents' mysterious death, uh, unravel the layers of the clandestine organization behind it all, and maybe even reveal the secrets of the coveted missing sugar bowl. Or not. I mean, honestly, from day one, the show never really promised us a happy ending. In fact, quite the opposite. So this could go either way. Uh, regardless of how it all plays out, here right now to tell us all about the terrible time she had making this most unfortunate show, the wonderful and talented Melina Weissman is in the building once again. How about that? We excited that Melina's here? I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Just making sure. Uh, it's good. We're going to bring her out in just a second. But before we do, I believe we have a trailer for the show. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Baudelaire's. Where in the world have you been and how did you get here? It began when our parents told us to take a rickety trolley to Briny Beach. I have some very bad news for you, children. Your home was destroyed and your orphans now. We went to live with Count Olaf. He threw Aunt Josephine to the leeches. <laughs> he conspired with Esme Squalor. And Carmelia Spatz. He kidnapped the Quagmire Triplets. He murdered Jacques Snicket in the village of foul devotees. You can't prove that. Baudelaire's, I need your help. This is the most important mission in VFD history. Let's not hesitate. Aye, aye. You disappoint us, Olaf. The Baudelaire fortune is small potatoes. No, I'm pretty sure it's money. Your submarine's ready. I will end VFD once and for all. Come to Papa! Please arrive by Thursday to the last safe place. The Hotel Dana Mall. Say you'll volunteer. Of course we will. This hotel is packed with familiar faces. Our enemies are getting bolder. We could all be in danger. I will get my revenge on everyone! What do you think they're up to, baby? Swabba. Things aren't always what they see in Baudelaire's. Our parents were training us for VFD and we didn't even know it. We can't live on the run forever. Don't you have any burning questions? Any unsolved mysteries? Don't you want to know what happens next? What happens next? Violet, Klaus, and Sonny Baudelaire. My name is Lemony Snicket. It's blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. The great Melina Wiseman's right here. Right here. Oh, man. What an awesome show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, congratulations, season three. It's out. People are talking about it. People love it. Uh, calling it one of the best ones yet. Uh, fitting end. It must be a really great time. You must be very excited. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible because when we first started the show, we had no idea what it was going to be. You go on set for the first time and you see these incredible sets that they build and you don't know that it's going to get better. Uh, because every now is season three, the sets are even more crazy and more incredible. We had a working elevator on set and a working roller coaster. And so, yeah, it's crazy. That's pretty, that is pretty crazy. I didn't realize you had, because uh, it's funny, you'll see a bunch of different behind the scenes pictures. Some, you guys are 100% uh, doing some fun stuff in front, of, in front of a green screen, but other stuff they've constructed, they've built meticulous detail, they've, every last little thing. Uh, do, does one stand out in particular? It sounds like the elevator was pretty <laughs> wild. I think maybe the carnival. Yeah. It's crazy, they do, they build all these sets while we're, so if we're filming, let's say the first two episodes on a set, they'll start building the next set for the next two episodes. And the sets every time get more incredible and more incredible and the creativity that's put into it and the color and the, everything is just so crazy. Um, I think the, the carnival was probably my favorite because it was very dusty, don't get me wrong. But um, uh, they had a working roller coaster that we got to ride. Um, but yeah, everything was so crazy. Yeah, it's funny, we had uh, Allison Williams was here earlier, uh, and we'll talk about how awesome she is in a second. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but she was saying the same thing, that you, there was this one uh, sort of soundstage, and you'd, you'd walk in one day, and it's you know, the side of a mountain. You'd leave, you'd come back the next day, and it's like a beach or something. Like, they would change it yeah. over, uh, and, and they were constantly moving, keeping things going. Uh, were you ever surprised with how quickly they, they were turning these things around? Oh I mean, my god, totally. Fun. It's so sad when they take down a set, because they, 
put up this incredibly put together creativity and then you walk in and it's a beach. It's completely gone. They, and they got special sand, I think, from Florida for the beaches. I was like, you could just get regular sand. It was crazy. They put so much thought into everything they did. Did they ever explain to you why specifically the Florida sand? Or no, they just said we got special sand. They just, they were brag, it was a humble brag. <laughs> well, just so you know, Melina, when you're doing this scene, that's Florida sand. All right, action. Well, it was so, it was so, I think they wanted, it was a specific color. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I asked I them, I was like, well, why? And they were like, <laughs> because it's a why? specific color. I don't know. Yeah, don't that's know. so great. I always think about that too, whenever you see uh, any set, really, it's like a work of art. It's a sculpture. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you have to let go of it and it has to, you have to make yeah. way for the next thing is pretty wild. But then the next set is always so it's incredible always too. It's even more amazing. Yeah. But always make sure to take pictures on set because yeah. it was so crazy. Got to hold on to those memories. Mm -hmm. uh, to that end, you know, this was, uh, we were just talking in the back, you wrapped up in May. Uh, I remember last time you guys were here, you were, you know, I think it was March, you were just getting started on season yeah. three. Uh, take me back to that last day of shooting. Was it sad? Was it hard? You had to say goodbye to all these friends it's, that you made all these years? It was so hard. I mean, you work on, we worked on it two and a half, two, three years. Um, and go again, like the first day on set, you have no idea what's gonna happen. We didn't even know if there was gonna be a season two, and now there's a three. And um, we're there every day um, from morning till night, and then you become a family, kind of, you know? You're on set, and everyone's been working there. Some people were there, some of the crew were there since season one. So the last day was so hard, you say bye. And some of the cast members, they left early because they didn't have scenes till the end, but yeah, it was really sad. I think Patrick was the last one to leave. Was he? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. makes sense. Captain <laughs> the ship kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how many, oh, over the over the whole series, the three seasons that you did with, uh, with NPH there, if you had to put a number on it, how many magic tricks did he do to pass time and keep you guys entertained? <laughs> so many. He did some magic tricks in season one, like on camera. Yeah. He did a few, or sometimes, we, sometimes if we had a map on set that we had to open, like Louis had to open a map at one point in season one, and so Neil would um, fold it in a certain way so it would just be easier to open, uh, which was pretty nice. So, it's yeah. a magic trick in and of yeah, itself. Yeah, I know. And also during uh, our table reads, he would just do some magic tricks in between. He was just like, why not? Did he really? He would be doing it during the table read? Oh, not during. It. Oh, like. He would pass notes during the table read. Oh, but he would so much fun. <laughs> he did he pass you a note? Yeah. What did it say? I mean, I don't remember. Sometimes he would just like write s silly things and then pass it to me and Louie. We were like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Just try to get you guys to crack up mm -hmm. and keep it light. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's got to be important, right? I mean, like, the, the show is called a series of unfortunate events. Uh, unfortunate things are happening. I imagine in between takes, even though there's a lot of comedy in there, but he's keeping you guys laughing, keeping you moving, because they're long days, like you said. Yeah, totally. Um, we didn't get to be together as much in season three, which was so sad, but he's so incredible. He has to play Count Olaf and another character, because Count Olaf is in disguise. Yeah. And then, so basically he's like playing three things at once, and he's like just a great actor. <laughs> like, yeah, there's something so cool to not just, he, when he's Count Olaf, and then he has to put another character and another uh, whole angle over that, mm -hmm. and be that third thing through the lens of, yeah. it's like a really hard thing to do. Did yeah. you talk to him at all? about uh, like uh, acting advice or how he figures out how to do that? Do you guys ever get a chance to I talk mean, about totally. that? I mean, totally. Also, me and Louis being kid actors, being able to watch all these incredible actors, like we have so many guest stars, so many incredible guest stars that come in and watching them, the way they act and how different they are from each other and how different they are from us and being able to take tips from all these different actors yeah. was just so, so great. I can imagine, because you guys did have a ton of amazing guest stars. Did um, did you ever try to, did you journal or anything to keep track of it? Or are you just keeping it all up here? Keeping it all <laughs> keeping up it here. All you know, yeah. watching them, you're on set, and sometimes when it's their angle in a scene, you're behind the camera, and you're just able to watch because you're not really thinking about your acting. And it's just a great thing to watch. Did you pick up the bug for, like, being behind the scenes and watching all that stuff? Like, maybe one day you want to direct something? or? Oh, you, yeah. totally. Yeah. My dream is to become a director. No way. Yeah, I really want to direct. I love the thought of Barry Sonnenfeld, who was... Yeah, let's talk who about Barry. There I mean, are. he's incredible. He, uh, He's just... He knows what he wants when he's doing something. He has such a creative mind. Yeah. And kind of speaking to him kind of made me realize that I wanted to become an, a director because I worked with him on a movie a long time ago, Nine Lives. Yeah. And 
just watching him and seeing what he's able to do and the power that he has to create something so incredible. Um, yeah, so. He's a great, have you ever gone back and watched like his older stuff that he's done too? Yeah, like the, totally. Yeah, like you know, the, the Adams Family stuff and whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he, he has such a specific uh, voice and vision. He's yeah. a great creative mind for you yeah. to tap into and, and like even absorb. When, yeah, and even when he wasn't directing an episode, he had so much input because he just has his vision and he knows what he wants and he just, I don't know, like he he goes into so much detail and he's really able to talk to actors, which is really incredible. That's pretty awesome. All right, so you wrapped up in May. It was a sad day. We were talking backstage. You've had you've gone back to school, mm -hmm. kind of getting back to normal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would imagine at some point you were in class daydreaming about what you're going to direct first or what you want to direct. Oh, totally. You yeah. always think about cool stories or you're watching, like, I always watch murder mysteries and, like, you're thinking about, oh, that's such a cool story. You don't, wouldn't think that's real or yeah, yeah. just crazy. So so yeah, totally. I should prep, I should say though, because your parents are here, that after you've studied completely, memorized <laughs> all the material, and have been an incredible student, then you begin daydreaming. Yeah, 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 and totally. That's when, yes, of course. Yeah, we, just pay attention in class, and then you could do the other stuff. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, have you uh, you obviously daydreamed? Have you given thought? Are you are you making plans for it? Hey, maybe in a year, two years, do you have like a vision board? Like, how are you going to make this happen? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, just writing down maybe in a yeah. book or something some ideas that I would ever have maybe like during the day I'm like oh wait that's cool writing that down and just kind of going with it and if there's something that really looks out to you I would definitely just maybe go for it I mean who knows just being aware being yeah yeah yeah, yeah. ideas you know uh you mentioned you'd worked with Barry uh on Nine Lives and you've done a, a bunch of other stuff you were uh, you were in Supergirl you were uh in Teenage Mutant Turtles you were in all, all kinds of cool stuff but this role Violet, the, the, the beauty of this is you were Violet for a couple of years. You got to be yeah. with this character from beginning to end. Uh, you know, what what have you taken away from this experience? What have you learned having to spend all this time that you got to a spend with A lot of words. Violet? Yeah? <laughs> Crazy A word. lot of words. Throw a word at me. I'm putting you on the spot. Think of one uh, word. Think of two words. Think of... I don't know. Right, There's just, the, just reading the script, you think of so is. many crazy words that are so put. Many. I'm like, I do not know what this means. Yeah. Go Google. Um, but I think Violet is definitely one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. She's so smart. She's yeah. someone that all girls can look up to. She's someone that everyone can look up to. Um, she cares about her family, but she also cares about getting what she wants. She's not scared to say what she feels, which is so important now. Um, so yeah, she's definitely someone I look up to and reading the script, sometimes I'm like, wow, well, how can I be more like her? Um, but yeah, she's definitely one of my favorites. Uh, she's, a, she's a fantastic character, no doubt. Both you and Louie do a great job over the whole series of, of just growing that like that sort of sibling relationship. And when you look at, especially in season three, there's a moment, uh, without spoiling anything, that you two, uh, in regards to like, trusting somebody, very much disagree on, which felt, I, I think it was like the first time that I saw such a strong disagreement between the yeah. two of you. Uh, talk about getting to do that stuff in season three and where that relationship uh, has gone and, and what you were excited to kind of do and learn as an actor. Well, that was really important on set, too. We thought about... Um we thought about how much I disagree with my brother yeah. and how much I agree with Fiona because we were kind of on and off about her because he has a little bit of a crush on her and I'm like, who are you? Kind of jealous. And I'm thinking more about our our goal and he's thinking more about let's hang out with Fiona. Um, but we did talk about that on set, how much there was of conflict and how much there wasn't. And that was really important because Violet and Klaus are so close. Yeah. Uh, they're the only family they kind of have left, including Sunny. But, um, yeah, so that was really important. And that was really exciting. That, I think that was really fun for me to be mad at him yeah. more than with him. Um, that was So that was really, really fun to play. Yeah, that's exciting. And then also, too, a lot in this third season, it's kind of like uh, the Baudelaire's are really in charge of themselves more than just, like, waiting for the next adult yeah. to fail them. Of course, adults still fail them. But, like, <laughs> it yeah. was like after uh, uh, all the stuff you'd seen and done, uh, especially by the end of it, like, you guys were really sort of trying to take charge and, and become your own people to, to make th these decisions. I got to imagine all of that was exciting as well when you saw that's where you were, we were finally getting to do that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was also our goal goal kind yeah. of to see the difference the shift in the Baudelaire's characters in the beginning we were kind of younger and we were kind of totally. more thinking oh the adults know what to do Mr. Poe will tell us what yeah. to do he never does um <laughs> but I think the goal was to show the contrast and in the end that we're taking charge we 
are as smart as adults can be. And the adults don't know what they're talking about. Nope, nope they don't. Uh, you guys nailed it. Uh, speaking of all the adults, uh, rather they know what they're talking about or not, we said a lot of crazy guest stars, and there's a, a, a great moment towards the end of this season where all, all, a lot of them come back, and you get to see them again. Was that a fun day? Did you get to see a lot of them in person, see people you hadn't seen in a couple of years, stuff like that? Yeah, Joan Cusack came back. Know, that was cool. so crazy, because she was there for the first day of filming, wow. and then she left. Uh and then she came back for the ending, yeah. which was so great to see her. She saw me and Louie and Presley, and she was like, whoa, you guys are so much older. <laughs> Especially Presley grew. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was really great to see her again. She's pretty amazing, isn't she? Oh, John my God, Cusack. amazing. Yeah. She would play music on set with her little speaker. She would just <gasps> put it down, and she would just play music, and everyone was like, this is new. <laughs> what kind of music was she playing? Just, like, whatever like she was... Rock music. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was she like trying to, oh, we're going to dig into this. Here goes the next 10 minutes of the talk. So, so Joan Cusack, she shows up. She's got a little speaker. Mm -hmm. She sets it down. She doesn't tell anybody what she's doing. She just starts playing some music. Yeah. And then what do you do? We, you ask her, who is this? Do you ask what's going on? Do you recognize the music? Louis asked her a lot, who is this? Yeah. He's like really into music. Well, he, it, it was mostly when we were doing the um, judging scenes when she was yeah. in the hotel and she was sitting on the judging table. So she would, also, you can't, in, the cameras couldn't see behind right. the desk of the judging table, so she would put her phone there, her coffee, her just all her stuff, and then she there was her speaker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then there was her speaker, so she wouldn't leave that because that's where she, where she was going to be for the whole day. So she would put her little speaker. She would just start playing music, and of course Barry had to start dancing. But I think everyone just started dancing for like five minutes, and then we would continue shooting. Yeah, what a great vibe, yeah. honestly. That sounds like so much fun. Are you keeping in touch with Louie and everybody? Since yeah, you, totally. You got yeah. a little text thread? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What about MPH? Is he in there? Does he have a text thread? No. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> He's every... a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, but I think everyone, we became so close over the course of the whole thing that it's important to keep in touch. Yeah. Um, I, I, we're going to go to the audience in just a second. We got a couple of questions out there. But I saw something that I wrote down. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, you were recently uh, Refinery29's Young Celebrities to Watch list. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'll hold for applause, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, one, I imagine that feels pretty great. And two, tell me about that. What's that like? How did that happen? They call you? What's going on? Uh, I mean, it's the whole, like, generation now, the uh, the Z list kind of thing. And it's just showing the importance of how much our generation means to our future. I think that our generation is so impactful and they could be so impactful and they should be so impactful mm -hmm. and our future is so important. So why not speak out about it and why not be there for it? For sure. I noticed uh, back in November you had put a, a cool tweet like encouraging people to vote. And it was just like, you can't vote yet, but it's important to you that yeah. people who can do. Well, I mean, we yeah. can't vote, so why not ask someone to go vote for us? Yeah, no, it's pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, do you? When did you start uh, paying attention and, and, and getting involved? And like, uh, when did you start thinking about this? Well, social media kind of forces you to see everything. Having an Instagram and just scrolling through your feed and seeing everything else, you kind of just read about the things that are happening in the world and a lot of the things can annoy you about what's happening and a lot of the things are like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so your mind just gets to, I guess, just having an Instagram made me realize. Yeah, having things. like followers and having like a platform and being yeah. like, I, I, I got to try to do something to yeah, make totally. good happen. Try to make a difference. <laughs> For sure. Well, good on you. That's pretty awesome. Uh, um, congratulations again Thank on you. this incredible, not just season three, but just the, the whole series. You guys, you, you really made <laughs> so something much. special. It's going to be around forever and people are going to continually just yeah. discover this and enjoy it and have a great time with it. Uh, we do have a question uh, that we're going to start with from Twitter. Uh, and it looks like it's from at Crystal Chang. Am I getting that right? Yeah, Crystal Chang here says, hey, uh, at Melina Weissman, did you guys play any pranks on set? Great question. Can't wait to hear. We have a story. Let's go. Um, season one, me and Louie played pranks on each other. Uh, I played, a, I think me and our set teacher uh, TP'd his trailer. What? He, on the last day of filming season one, he put a fart bomb in my desk in the schoolroom, and I took it out, and it exploded in my hand, and we couldn't go in the schoolroom for the rest of the day. Um, but season three, the producer played a trick on me and Dylan, who plays the tr uh, who plays the Quagmires, and they told th so the there the the scene on the top of the mountain. They told us both that we would have to kiss each other, which was fine, but. 
at the end, right before we were supposed to film, they were like, just kidding. <laughs> so that actually, that's way more cruel than it sounds on paper because yeah. every moment leading up to that, you're like, all right, I got to do this. Was yeah, that yeah, Would yeah. that have been your first on-screen kiss if that were the case? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now you've got that stress in the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the lines. And, and we yeah. have to climb a mountain. Yeah. And all this. Oh, that's messed up. Yeah. Did you prank back? I tried to, but it was kind of the end of filming. There was, I don't know. Yeah. I should have thought of something good. Yeah. I think me and... Uh, the uh, all of us in the makeup trailer, we were all trying to think of one for Louis, but we never could have think, thought of a good one. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, you've kept touch with Louis. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't prank him outside of those True. outside True. of those boundaries. It's, anything's possible. I've got what I got three Kate. That's fantastic. We got three questions, and the first one is going to be right over here on our blue couch. Go for Hi. it. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering when you're filming the episode Slippery Slope and you have to climb the frozen waterfall, what did like, were you actually climbing it, and was there, like, a certain thing that you used? Yeah. Um, so it's also in kind of the first episode where we're climbing the mountain from the carnival van. They slant the camera, and they slant the, bo the board so it's straight. So we're kind of just crawling, and then the camera is slanted. But we also did have harnesses because it was a little high up. And we had fake forks in our shoes and we had and they had holes specifically so we had to know exactly where to put our feet and hang on to so yeah that was kind of cool but it was also hard to crawl and pretend like you're climbing up but yeah cool. did, did you guys do a lot of rehearsal a lot of like preparing and giving it a go before yeah i mean that snow <laughs> that snow was so dusty <laughs> everyone was like dusting in their eyes and climbing so yeah Man, wow. Uh, what do we got? Two more? All right, we got another question for you right over here. Go for it. Hello. Hi. Um, did you share any qualities with Violet? Do you have similar traits with her? Because I know you said you looked up to her a lot. Great question. Yeah. Uh, again, I look up to her so much. I love art, and I guess she invents things, so I guess inventing art, kind of. When I was little, I would sit in my room and just do art for like three to two hours, so... Yeah, I feel like that's something we have in common, just inventing and creating things. When you're doing art, you're creating and doing something visual. What, what, like, when you were little, what was like your favorite thing to mess around with and play with? Cereal boxes. Really? I would make like little doll houses, oh, no way. and then like little cardboard people, and that's you could just put them around. Yeah. Does your mom have any of them still? Pictures of them? No. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I have to ask her. That's a question for her, isn't it? Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Though. I didn't expect that. Cereal <laughs> boxes. Thank you for your question. We've got one more, one final question. It's going to be right here. Go for it. Hi. Um, did you? Um, wait, no, that's not how I should start it. <laughs> um, um, what was the hardest scene of any episode to film? Ooh, um, this is kind of in season two. Is that okay? Um, <laughs> like me, when me and Louis are in our big carnival, we have to be together. We have to walk in sync. And since I'm shorter than him now, I have to have these big blocks on the bottom of my shoes. So being able to walk, I think all of those scenes were pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great question as well. You guys yeah, are all great questions. You. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, unfortunately, I'm out of time. I got to wrap things up. No. I know. I got to let you go. You got to get back to uh, uh, go, homework. You got to go do. You, gotta have, you have homework tonight? Well, it's a school night, isn't it? Yeah. What do you got to do? What class? I have math homework. You got math? Oof. <laughs> I was terrible at math. I ended up going to art school. <laughs> Be better than me. Um, we <laughs> got to wrap things up, uh, and we're going to get out of here in just a second. But uh, I want to remind everybody, it, it's out on Netflix right now, a series of unfortunate events. Season three is there. Watch the whole show if you haven't. Uh, you're crazy not to. It's an amazing show, and you are amazing in it. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for coming here. I'm excited for whatever you do next. You can come back and hang out with us again. Uh, everybody, join me. Make a ridiculous amount of noise. The great Melina Weissman right here. Come Thank on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.